can be there. I've seen from almost every slide you brought up THC having effects in, the, in a similar fashion. Uh, some of these have been just with CBD because they tried to, uh, scientists, particularly if you have drug company money behind you or academic money, a lot of times they're oriented toward again, a single molecule to try to identify exactly what it does. Well, especially like yeah, with epilepsy and stuff, I know it is particularly CBD or even diabetes, but uh, THC was really good for antioxidant effect. THC is also very good for antioxidant effect, it turns out. They're both very, very good for okay. antioxidants, which is a way of healing the body that doesn't go through receptors. Antioxidant is a that antioxidant aspect of both CBD and THC is a receptor independent mechanism of influencing you know, the body. And that's the way the scientists are, receptor independent mm -hmm. uh, But yes, yeah, most often THC and CBD are working in sync, but we're going to get to that okay. again. Uh, just to develop this point a little bit about this enzyme called FA, fat, it's the long scientific name, but it, that enzyme that breaks down our body's own cannabinoids our natural cannabinoids in our brain and throughout our body, called FA. CBD inhibits FA. And they found that when you give a FA inhibitor that the drug companies create a synthetic one, they don't use CBD, they use some synthetic thing they create and they tweak the enzyme levels of rats. And you see what happens? It relieves ex experimentally induced colitis when they do this, lowers blood pressure of hypertensive rats, ameliorates neuropathic pain and arthritis and uh, Animal models, blunts withdrawal system, uh, symptoms in morphine dependent mice. All animal studies, all uh, things that happen when you suppress this enzyme that, that breaks down your own cannabinoids, thereby elevating your cannabinoid levels, it does sort of the same thing that THC hitting the cannabinoid receptors. You know, our own body will do it more if it's there. It makes more. It makes sense. You see, it kind of reaffirms what we know. If you uh, turn on those receptors with THC has the same effect as if you suppress phi and elevate your own. All those things THC does, it's been found to help colitis, help with high hypertension, help with neuropathic pain, uh, and, and help blood with growth systems. We know that from even just simply high THC strains have reported to do all those things for people. So it's kind of a confirming science, if you see what I mean. Okay. CBD is a medicine. Moving along now. To the, toward the end of the discussion. If you go into a, a collective, as you call it here, and you want CBD, you're not going to go in with a plate asking for a bunch of molecules. And we've been talking about CBD the molecule. Now we'll talk very briefly about CBD as a mess. And I like to call it a dialectical plant because it's a plant that has compounds with opposite effects. CBD and THC in some ways have opposite effects and some ways have complementary effects. It's kind of like a yin-yang. Um, it, CBD blunts the psychoactivity of THC, it enhances the pain-killing aspect of THC because CBD hits other receptors that are also involved in pain perception that THC doesn't hit. So it's a double whammy. THC hits C, uh, uh, the CB2 receptor, the peripheral receptor. That's why marijuana is good for peripheral nerve pain, for peripheral neuropathy. THC does that. Uh, CBD adds another dimension to it or in other places in the body. So if you get CBD-rich medicine, uh, it would be, uh, by all accounts, the best medicine for neuropathic pain. There's certainly, certainly nothing coming from big pharma for this. Um, we call it the entourage effect. I should, when I say we, I'm all of a sudden I'm posing as a scientist. I, I, if I didn't say at the beginning, you know, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, I'm just a journalist. So, but the entourage effect is a beautiful phrase, almost a poetic phrase, that Raphael Mashulin uses, that guy who first elucidated the structure of CBD and THC. Um, and it refers to the fact that the, when you look at the cannabis plant, you have hundreds of different compounds in there, about a hundred different cannabinoids. Most of them are so tiny and they're so, you, know, you don't even know anything about it. But a bunch of them we do, and they all have medicinal properties. And then you add to that the terpenes, the, the, the things that give the plant the smell, the beautiful smell. It could be over a hundred different terpenes have appeared in marijuana but no more than 40 at a time in the plant. But all those things, it turns out, have medicinal effects. Some of those things hit some of the cannabis receptors, the, the CB2 receptor, certain terpenes. Um, so they're like chemical cousins. And then you have the flavonoids, the, the compounds that make the, uh, the fruit it's called, make strawberries red, blueberries blue, the flavonoids. There are certain flavonoids that only exist in marijuana, nowhere else. Uh, flavonoids are very important in terms of, you, you know, your blueberries, right? They, 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 this is, we're being told, this is a really great antioxidant. Uh, so you get all this effect from marijuana, and the point is that you have all these different components of the plant, 
each with their own medicinal attributes, when combined, have this entourage effect together so that the therapeutic attributes of the whole plant is greater than some of the parts. The whole plant therapeutics. And that's why Project CBD is really the THC's offense committee. And we're, not, <laughs> we're not against THC by any stretch, uh, but we're all going to that one. GW Pharmaceuticals is a, a British pharmaceutical firm. They're kind of the, really the black sheep in the family in terms of they're not really a big farmer. They're more of a startup between a startup and a big farmer. But they've got a lot of money and they're putting out a great product and under the tongue spray that's basically 50, or I see 49% CBD, 49% THC, and a couple of percent everything else. It's a whole plant extract. Has a, a, delivers a consistent measured dose. It's an under the tongue spray. So every time you spray it, you're getting a certain amount. Exactly. And with the drug, uh, what the drug regulator is like, it's clinically effective without causing psychoactivity. In other words, that spray, while it might help relieve multiple sclerosis pain, will not get you high. And that's what it indeed was for, it has been initially marketed for. Canada it was adopted. And now it's adopted in many countries around the world, this spray, not only for multiple sclerosis, but for other kinds of neuropathic pain, diabetes, <coughs> this kind of pain, cancer patients, this kind of pain, and AIDS patients. Um, in the United States, clinical trials are going on with, with human subjects uh, for Sativex, GW's product, uh, testing it for cancer pain. So it might be approved as a medicine. And I say, you know, they play the whole big pharma game is what they're doing. But it's a whole plant cannabis medicine. Uh, it seems to be a very good medicine. Uh, you know, aside from the whole question of big pharma and all that that implies, one of the very significant things is because of GW pharmaceuticals, there is data from a CBD-rich compound given to thousands of human subjects in many different countries around where they've gone through clinical trials to have it approved. So all this data is on the record. So, so you, there's not just the preclinical stuff. The preclinical stuff is sort of tantalizing, all the things we went through, or much of it. Uh, but we actually have a lot of data uh, on, on human results. So it's, it's not just, well, you know, I mean, there's, what it means is just they, they have no answer to this. The drug, the regulators. Um, a word on psychoactivity. 